Yeah, depending who you talk to, Mallard either employed a sense of senior year pranks or a cruel form of torture. Firstly, the sprinklers possibly off on the timing there, given that they were put on when Wellington opened up and poured down on the protesters anyway. And there were a bunch of tradies out on the lawn, number eight wire mentality that basically dug the place up, um, making some drainage for those sprinklers to get out of here anyway. The playlist, look, I don't understand the Barry Manilow thing. The Macarena is a straight banger and all it caused was a bit of boogieing on the lawn. Probably the most effective was the recorder cover of My Heart Will Go On. I asked my poor mother about that. I learned that as a child and she will probably testify in a court of law that that is a cruel form of torture. But look, the cops have given uh, Trevor Mallard a bit of a serve as well, saying it's not a tactic that they would use, but it is what it is. So it's a fine line the opposition parties have to walk, though, isn't it? Because you don't want to appear to be supporting the protesters, but at the same time, you want to condemn a speaker who's made the situation worse. David Seymour going the furthest on this. Yeah, David Seymour has called it childish behaviour and said he needs to be reprimanded for it. In the Speaker's defence, I think a lot of staff have been uh, expressing concern around the building to him that it feels like this is going nowhere. No one knows how this is going to end and it doesn't feel like there has been any movement since for a week now. The cars are still blocking up Molesworth Street. Some of these protesters have been here basically terrorising Wellingtonians, you know, abusing school kids, making a mess of Parliament's lawn, clogging up traffic and just making a nuisance of themselves for a week now and no one seems to be doing anything about it from the public uh, looking in. So possibly he was getting a little bit of feedback from his staff on precinct who do feel a little bit unsafe and, and obviously took matters into his own hands. Yeah, absolutely. All right, very quickly, we just spoke to Matt King from the, the former National MP. He said, you know, he's been in there talking to them. He said if the government announced a date by which they would remove the mandates and, and you know, Michael Baker has said that that's an entirely plausible thing to do, they would all move on. How close do you think the Prime Minister is getting, because she's been MIA on this, to actually announcing a date for ending mandates? Mm. She has acknowledged that, that mandates will end while the protesters... Sorry, not end while the protesters are here. She has acknowledged while the protesters are here that at some point in the future, mandates will end. But putting a date on it at this point... Um, the, the, politically, the Prime Minister is in a really tricky position. If she puts a date on it to kind of appease these guys, all she's doing is capitulating to a bunch of protesters that have basically held Parliament hostage for a week, and you don't want to be doing that as a Prime Minister. On the other hand, how does this end... You know, the cops are saying they're not going to arrest their way out of this. They're trying to negotiate, which with a bunch of the leaders, of which there are several. So, um, yeah, rock and a hard place for the Prime Minister. I don't know whether you'll see her put an end date on them while they're still standing out here, though. All right, Gina, thank you very much for that. Gina Lynch with us live from Parliament, our News Hub political editor this morning.